Hello everyone, I'm The Enforcer and welcome to the breaking news. Today's breaking news is that Freedom of Russia Legion forces and free Russian battalions are beginning to rapidly advance in the area of Belgrade and are also beginning to inflict incredibly high losses and casualties on the Russian forces. Information is circled today saying that the Russian Volunteer Corps, a part of the Free Russian Army, has declared that Russians should leave the area of Belgrade as shelling will continue. According to the Kyiv Post, the militants stated that they would open fire on Russian military facilities in the regions today of Kursk and Belgrade and were urging civilians to once again evacuate these areas. We've already understood that these shellings have occurred as of three hours ago, with a small department building being hit and two Russians being killed and nine being injured. Once again, the Free Russian Army is encouraging civilians to evacuate the area and leave Belgorod and Kursk, as the battles are only expected to become more severe and more intense as time goes on. At the exact same time, Free Russian Army forces have been able to burn down Russian ammo warehouses as they begin to advance forward. We were able to find this here on the Kiev Post, and it shows a video clearly depicting the burning down of large ammunition warehouses by the Svoboda Russia, or the Free Russian Army. The Free Russian Army appears to be destroying ammunition stores instead of capturing them and bringing them under, con under their control, possibly suggesting that at the moment they have a high amount of supplies, and on top of that they are trying to deprive the Russian military of vital resources and ammunition to fight back with if they were to ever attempt to recapture the ammunition depot. At the exact same time in the area of Grybron, we started to hear that Russians are taking heed to the Free Russian Army statements and are beginning to leave the area, saying that there are heavy firefights occurring around the towns of Grybron and also the smaller town closer to the border of Kazinka, and they're now going to be fleeing the area and trying to leave the firefight. In this video, we can see a large amount of Russian civilians trying to get to a gas station and fill up with gas, most likely for the long trip ahead out of the area. We can see the cameraman continuing to show the queues waiting to get gas at these gas stations as people try to leave the area. That's the end of the clip, but giving us a very clear insight into the public inside the area around Gryveron and Kozinka, as they are now clearly beginning to leave the area due to the massive amounts of fighting that are occurring there at this moment. From what we also understand, Free Russian Army forces have been advancing continuously over the past day or two. We have not been able to update the front lines on our maps due to operational security reasons, and while we are reporting the situation as it's unfolding at the moment, our frontline map here that you're seeing on stream is nearly 24 to 36 hours old, and is not completely representative of the frontline situation inside of Russia that we're seeing at this moment. Because information came out today from the very southern end of Belgrade that there has been clear signs a battle near the city as some civilians try and evacuate from the area but we see some um, Russian army vehicles that have apparently been hit and caught on fire near the highway very recently showing that armed conflict has apparently even reached the very outskirt of the city of Belgorod already and Russian border guard forces are nowhere to be seen at the moment appearing to be in a complete route and allowing the free Russian army to advance with really the speed they wish to advance at. You can see here the burning vehicles. These are the vehicles of the Polizia and the Russian Border Guard Service, which are on fire and burning around the areas of this highway. That's the end of that clip, but once again showing that the battle has already started to probably move on all the way from uh, Novotavljanka and Shevakino and out towards the outskirts of the city of Belgrade, showing that the Russians are in a very dire strait at the moment as far as their defense is concerned within this oblast. At the exact same time, we started to hear the sounds of heavy explosions on the very outskirts of Belgorod and heard that the air raid sirens were beginning to sound over the city, encouraging citizens to shelter in place or to try and hide as the battle begins to reach the outskirts of Belgorod.
The sounds of the explosions in the distance appear to be only a few mere miles away, showing that free Russian army forces have rapidly advanced on the city overnight. And while we're not going to be stating their exact locations, these videos are making it quite clear that the battle for the Belgrade Oblast is ending and the battle for Belgrade City is most likely going to be beginning within these next few hours as this video goes live. Moving on from that news and into our next bit, we also got to see that there was an explosion near the railway station inside the city of Belgrade. The railway station inside of Belgrade city is one that is directly inside of the middle of the city. There is also a large rail yard that is adjacent to the train station where a large amount of cargo and military equipment is kept usually inside of its rolling stock. The attack may have been trying to hit these rolling stocks inside of the rail yards on the uh, right in the center of the screen right here, or they may have been trying to attack some other infrastructure near to the railroad station. However, the picture is quite clear that the fire did come from this area, the explosion came from this area, and it is showing that the Free Russian Army may be attempting to uh, block or completely stop the movement of reinforcements into the area by train, or maybe to try and destroy equipment and resources that Russian defenders could use out of the rolling stock inside of the rail yard near the central Belgorod railway station. One thing is becoming very certain, while I have one of the worst voice cracks I've ever had making one of these videos, is that the situation within the Belgrade Oblast is very severe at the moment for the Russian uh, Federation, and it appears that the Free Russian Army is making unbelievable advances at the moment to begin to take the city of Belgrade. If the Free Russian Army takes the city of Belgrade, there are really no other large settlements within the entire area of the Oblast, except for Stary Oskol, all the way up here at the very top and northern eastern part of the Belgrade area. However, while we're hearing that the situation is apparently rapidly progressing in good favor for the Free Russian Army inside of Belgrade, we have gotten absolutely no information about what's going on in the Tekino area inside of the Kursk Oblast. <clears throat> Here, Free Russian Army soldiers are attempting to try and hold their positions within Tekino and Popovo Lizachi, but we have not been able to hear of any kind of a rapid advance further into the Kursk Oblast or any actual firefights as of today. This entire front in the Kursk Oblast has fallen silent as of right now, and we're not seeing any updates or any additional information on what may be going on on the Free Russian Army front inside of Kursk. But once again in Belgrade, the situation is rapidly improving for the, for the Free Russian Army, and it is rapidly deteriorating for the Russian Federation and the Putin-led government. Meanwhile, all the way up in northern Moscow, we saw that a high-rise fire turned into an inferno today, probably due to some kind of a cheap insulation being used or a cheap fireproofing, which led to the entire facade of this high-rise turning into a roaring inferno and doing just that on film. We see the fire rapidly progressing into a literal fireball. In the West, this is what they would call a uh, moderate fire hazard. Well, you can hear the workers are in dismay that a fire has started on a high-rise that is made out of probably the most flammable material on Earth, from what we can tell. You see the smoke beginning to billow from the base of the building, showing that most of the tiles that were on the side of the high-rise have fallen out and now have become a smoldering pile on the ground. Nevertheless, things simply just do not get better for the Russians, whether they're trying to uh, build up some kind of a defense within Belgrade against the Free Russian Army, or whether they're trying to build a high-rise, it appears that everything comes down in a pile of flames, and it's nothing more than a small house of cards. And speaking of a small house of cards, the amount of, the amount of house of cards uh, kind of jokes that one could make about the Russian oil refineries 
is one that's incredibly high because we actually found today that the amount of Russian oil refineries that are near to the border area of Ukraine and are within Ukraine targeting distance is wildly high. And this could be described as the Russian Achilles heel over the course of the entire war. This is a map of all oil refineries that are inside of the Russian Federation, put up in dot form, each dot representing a different kind of a, a status for each oil refinery. Uh, gray means that the oil refinery has not been attacked. Yellow means that the refinery has been offline since it was attacked last year. Red means that they've been attacked and damaged. And orange means that they've been attacked but not damaged over the past few days. We can see that the Ukrainians have started to attack a limited number of oil refineries within the area of Western Russia, but there are still a large amount that are available to be attacked by the Ukrainians and completely knocked out and destroyed. Going off of this map that we're seeing right here, one thing is quite clear that the Ukrainians do have the ability to bring the Russians to their knees. Just in knocking out and damaging three oil refineries, either knocking them out fairly recently or knocking them out last year, they've been able to knock out almost 13%, 12% really, but almost 13%. Uh, percent of Russia's fuel producing abilities that came out of these refineries. And that kind of a damage caused by such a small level of attacks and with so many more attacks that could unfold happening, it makes it very clear that this can be the Russians Achilles heel and this may end up being the Russian Achilles heel because destroying the Russians ability to produce fuel deprives their armed forces of an ability to try and do anything in the future that requires a vehicle. If it requires fuel, it will not run. And as long as the Ukrainians are able to knock out the majority, over 50%, of Russian oil producing abilities, the Russians will probably have to tap into their strategic reserves and probably run them dry if they want to continue on their war effort. Meaning that now the war has another artificial timer set on it, which is how long will the strategic fuel reserves last for the Russian Federation. Moving on from that, it seems as though they won't really have to be worrying about that too much because one thing that has certainly put a timer onto the Russian military's effectiveness is how old their aging fleet of, of utility helicopters, attack helicopters, and many other kinds are. Inside the area of the Magadan region of Russia in the Far East, we got to hear that an Mi-8 utility helicopter of the Russian army crashed today, killing at least two people and once again showing that the aging fleet of helicopters that the Russian Federation have been fielding are starting to seriously show signs of age and are beginning to crash at a pretty high rate because of how old they are, with no replacement in sight. The United States has been running into a similar situation with UH-60 Blackhawks, which are starting to run into a lot of critical failures, but the United States is working on replacing those with the Bell V-260 Valor. The Russians have absolutely no intention of replacing the Mi-8 or the Mi-17 in Russian Army service into the in well into the future. At this moment, there isn't even an idea of replacing that helicopter. So we're probably going to see that these kinds of incidence rates, where there's just crashes in the middle of nowhere because of critical failures, are probably going to start increasing a good bit. And that's at a terrible time for the Russians, because the French have said today, once again, that they will be sending troops to Odessa in less than a year. Macron said that very clearly to a closed circle of guests, one of those guests now talking to the newspaper Le Monde, uh, which is one of the most reputable and trusted newspapers inside of all of France. And according to Le Monde, they said that in a closed circle of people, Macron announced that he would send troops to the Odessa region of Ukraine. That's something that we were able to largely confirm and something that we have been talking about here on this channel for quite a while about the possibility of France sending troops to Ukraine and that possibility becoming more of a certainty as time passes. And now we're starting to hear that it is definitely a certainty and French troops will be arriving inside of Ukraine at some point within um, less than a year's time away from now. With that, that is really all the breaking news we have today. I thank every single one of y'all so much once again for watching. I hope that y'all enjoyed and if y'all did, Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and you can support us on our Patreon, link in the description below, which helps us to make these video projects possible. A huge shout out to all of our patrons who are already supporting our Patreon, because y'all are helping to really make these videos as possible as they are. And so with that, thank you all so much once again, and I'll see y'all in the next one.